Hi guys, this is Patrick Welker from rocketing.net. This video is about Keyboard Maestro and Markdown. Two of my favorites which led to the ultimate Markdown Maestro guide. The question is, how do you write Markdown? Well, honestly, I don't know, but I'm going to show you how I do. Markdown links are the meat of online publishing and dear to all the bloggers out there. Naturally, this is my favorite palette. I can click on generate search link to open another palette which prompts me to choose an argument for Brett Turfster's excellent search link service for OS X. And since this was a piece of cake, let's create some more links. Now that we have created enough links with the search link generator macro, we can run Brad's search link script, also via the palette, and the output gets rendered. If you want to know more about the search link service, head on to Brad's site and read his article and documentation on the service. We can do much more with the palettes. Here's another example for inline footnotes also a service by Brett Terpster and a must-have for everyone who uses footnotes in his blog. The next palette is the global palette and it's kind of a toolkit for getting even more markdown done. You can adjust the heading plus and minus, insert the table easily or wrap your selection in a code block. And while we're at it, let's do some more things like adding a list of fruits, alphabetize them with Gabe Weatherhead's macro, or prepend the whole list with a plus sign. If you don't like plus signs, mark it again and use Brett's bulletin service. The next tool is Switch Link Style by Seth Brown, aka Dr. Bunsen at Twitter. And you can choose between inline links or reference markdown links. You can switch easily back and forth with this one. Lastly, when we want to export our markdown, in this palette you can find a variety of export options. For instance, you want to send an email, but you don't want to bother the addressee with a markdown formatted mail or you just open marked. If you use Keyboard Maestro, you end up with a lot of macros. Having a filing system for your macros definitely brings some benefits to the table. You can gather macros from regular contributors and if you're a blogger, this way of organizing makes crediting the authors easier. But how exactly? Let's take a glance at the first macro of the group we are in. The first macro is just a comment macro, hence I baptized the section the comment section. Proper attribution is one of the reasons for using the comment actions in Keyboard Maestro. The other reason is you can add descriptions of what the macro actually does and add a link below your summary so you can keep track of the macro, script or service and check the source for updates. So what precisely makes this kind of organization a modular system? Having a good part of your macro library tucked away in the author section might seem a bit odd at the first glance, but by using the execute macro function to call a specific macro, you can restructure your palettes more easily, until you found a setup you like. Using the execute macro is like creating an alias in the finder, and it's equally easy. And aside from that, you have visual cues on what you actually use. I don't use Safari and Brett's wrapping macros don't work at the moment, so I simply disable all of these macros for now.
that's about it. Harvest the power of pellets to help you write faster in Markdown. Check out the blog and learn how to use Markdown with Keyboard Maestro and how to bring order to your armada of macros. I'm Patrick Welker from rocketing.net. Have a great one and see you soon.